How many rubber snakes do you go through? How many rubber snakes? Yeah, you notice that one got some struggles. We went through about five last year. <laughs> yeah, that was, we're gonna have to make that one last a little bit longer because when it comes to uh, some of our finances, the rubber snake's pretty low on our list. So. Uh, yeah, we, we go through a lot. Anyway, we did to rescue them pretty quickly. So funny story about that behavior. We didn't have to train her to go for the snake. She knew how to do that on her own. That's an instinctual wow. behavior. But we had to train her to just walk away from the snake so we could rescue it for the next day show. Yeah, so. <laughs> so Penny is fully flighted, so we're going to see if she'll showcase some flights there across the back of the stage. Uh, we're going to start here on our perch highway, and we're going to ask her to head over to the platform. Do these a couple times back and forth. It's really beautiful behavior. She's got about a seven foot wingspan, which is pretty amazing. And then at the very tips of her wings, as she pops up and is moved around, you might notice that she has some white on the tips of her wings as well. So, see if she can showcase some of these flights for us. What do you think, Ken? Stay to the back of the stage and go see? Yeah. Pretty cool to see her moving around. We'll send her right back to Samantha and we'll say that's good for a flight. So you think 10 one more? You can do it. Good job. Now you might also hear her making a different type of sound out here. Um, these guys can produce sound in a couple different ways. They are known as hornbills, so that uh, bump on top of their beak can be used to produce sound. And typically a male hornbill's bump on his beak is called a calf because it's a lot larger than a female. This is a female bird, so she's got a much smaller little bump there. But she can also produce sound using that flap of skin under her beak there. It's called her gular pouch. That's the same term we use when we're talking about a pelican's pouch. It's also called a gular pouch. Obviously very different tools on these guys when it comes to pelicans versus a hornbill. But she can produce sound in that pouch as well. What you're hearing out here with her is what I like to attend the happy sound to. Kind of like a cat purring. Or really, more realistically, like when we get lunch and we're like, mm, nom, 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 nom. That's the sound she makes a lot of times when she sees her trainers because she associates us with all the things that are positive. Um, it's always a good time out here with trainers. And then she can also make a booming sound, and this booming sound is a very low frequency. So it sounds like a very low sound to us, but for birds, they can hear it for a few miles away, and that's a, a way to communicate with other hornbills as well. Again, these guys do live in those large flocks. Does anybody have any questions about Penny or Southern Ground Hornbill before I go on? How old is she? Penny's about seven years old. That's how old she was. Um, she was actually uh, just here in the United States, and she moved here around the counter stage about two and a half years ago. So I have to check my records exactly. I'm going to send the fly. How long did they live? How long did they live for? We expect her to live into her 20s or 30s here. That's not unheard of for them. Now, in that natural environment, they do face a lot of uh, uh, issues. One of those issues being the poison with the pest control we talked about. Um, another issue is that uh, a lot of areas are poisoning, the illegal hunters are poisoning carcasses because vultures will start to circle and that will give away their position. Well, these guys will eat carcasses as well, so they might get affected by the poison that's targeting vulture populations. Um, and then they do nest up in trees, they nest in hollows of old growth trees. So when you have a reduction in those trees, that becomes an issue for them as well. Now, Dalsu does work with the Maluba Ground Hornbill Project, which is a group in South Africa that helps these species out. <laughs> and uh, we actually did have uh, feet on the ground in, our, in that area last year. Our bird curator was uh, visited over there and was able to help with the reintroduction. So it's not just what you see here at the zoo uh, when it comes to you do create that better world for animals around the world as well. Yes, Leanna, what would you like to say? Her name is Penny. Yeah, and she's got a, a sister, I don't know, the fish or else, they arrived at the same time. Her name is Bernadette, and Bernadette works on our wildlife show on the other side of the zoo. So, yeah, Penny and Bernadette. Well, guys, Penny is going to be making her way off stage here momentarily. And you can check that board okay. behind us. We're out here every 30 minutes. Our next animal at 1230 is going to be a lizard. We have an armadillo at 1. One of my personal favorites are a vulture at 130. You can kind of check that board behind us and choose to come back and see us if you'd like to choose any of those guys. Um, if you're playing the rest of your zoo day, it is a one-way path as you enter the gorilla field. That's just to the left over on this side. My left, your right, go that way. Um, and that'll start you with the hippo, then it'll move you around to find chips, gorillas, and your pets all along that trail. Um, and it'll end you at the entrance to Giants and Savannah. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? Awesome, guys. Thanks so much. Have a good night. Good night. Good night.